Sorry, Dizzy, yet. Hey, everybody, Jim Bull coming back to you on uh, Tuesday evening, yep, and we're studying Rick Warren's book, The Purpose Driven Life, What on Earth, what on earth Am I Here For? And again, we're trying something new today. Uh, as I told you yesterday, my webcam is biting the dust. I think my whole computer is getting ready to, and I don't even want to say that, knock on wood. Need that baby to get some things done. Now I just made my camera flip around there, so sorry about that. But anyhow, we're reading uh, Rick Warren's book, the Purpose Driven Life, and uh, it's designed and uh, broken down into 40 chapters. You read a chapter a day, and then you meditate or pray on that. You think about what we've covered in that chapter. Uh, Rick said earlier on that the reason we don't get what we need to out of the books we read is because we rush through them too quickly. We're always waiting to see what happens in the next chapter. we got to keep going, right? You ever tell somebody, boy, I couldn't lay that book down. And I guess that's all right in a fictional book or or something with a storyline like that, but we're, we're trying to discern God's will for our life here. So I'm going to read through chapter 11, and then I'm going to let you guys reflect on that till this time tomorrow again. And this chapter is titled, Becoming Best Friends with God. And the scripture is from Romans chapter 5, verse 10. It says, Since we were restored to friendship with God by the death of His Son, while we were still His enemies, we will certainly be delivered from eternal punishment by His life. So I would challenge you to reflect on that. Um, the chapter starts, God wants to be your best friend. Your relationship to God has many different aspects. God is your creator and maker, Lord and master, judge, redeemer, father, savior, and so much more. But the most shocking truth is this, the most shocking truth is this, almighty God yearns to be your friend. In Eden we see God's ideal relationship with us. Adam and Eve enjoyed an intimate friendship with God. There were no rituals, ceremonies, or religion. Just a simple loving relationship between God and the people He created. Unhindered by guilt or fear, Adam and Eve delighted in God and He delighted in them. We were made to live in God's continual presence, but after the fall, that ideal relationship was lost. And we're not talking about spring, winter, summer, fall. We're talking about uh, Satan coming in and uh, the fall of Adam and Eve and the fall of mankind. So um, only a few people in the Old Testament times had the privilege of a friendship with God. Moses and Abraham were called friends of God. David was called a man after God's own heart. And Job, Enoch, and Noah had intimate relationships with God. But fear of God, not friendship, was more common in the Old Testament. Then Jesus changed the situation. When he paid for our sins on the cross, the veil in the temple that symbolized our separation from God was split from top to bottom, indicating that direct access to God was once again available. Unlike the Old Testament priests who had to spend hours preparing to meet him, we can now approach God anytime. The Bible says, Now we can rejoice in our wonderful new relationship with God, all because of what Lord, the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ, has done for us in making us friends of God. Friendship with God is possible only because of the grace of God and the sacrifice of Jesus. All this is done by God, who through Christ changed us from enemies into his friend. The old hymn says, What a friend we have in Jesus. But actually, God invites us to enjoy friendship and fellowship with all three persons of the Trinity, our Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I learned from my Father, I have made known to you. The word for friend in this verse does not mean a casual acquaintance, but a close, trusted relationship. Isn't it so, man, the, the friends, that term we use very loosely, and there's not many of them out there if you're honest about it. I mean, I hope you have more than I do, but... I can count them on my hand, and, and God and Jesus will be right at the top, the Holy Spirit. The same word is used to refer to the best man at a wedding and a king's inner circle of intimate, trusted friends. In royal courts, servants must keep their distance from the king, but the inner circle of trusted friends enjoy close contact, direct access, and confidential information. That God would want me to that God would want me for a close friend is hard to understand, but the Bible says. He is a God who is passionate about his relationship with you. God deeply desires that we know him intimately. In fact, 
He planned the universe and orchestrated history, including the details of our lives, so that we could become his friends. The Bible says, He made the entire human race and made the earth hospitable. Huh. With plenty of time and space, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have laughed, Lord, forgive me. He made the entire human race and made the earth hospitable with plenty of time and space for living so we could seek after God and not just grope around in the dark, but actually find Him. Knowing and loving God is our greatest privilege and being known and loved is God's greatest pleasure. God says, if any want to boast, they should boast that they know and understand me. These are the things that please me. It's difficult to imagine how an intimate friendship is possible between an omnipotent, invisible, perfect God and a finite, sinful human being like us. It's easier to understand a master-servant relationship, or a creator-creation relationship, or even father-child. But what does it mean when God wants me as a friend? By looking at the lives of God's friends in the Bible, we learn six secrets of friendship with God. We will look at two secrets in this chapter and four more in the next. So this is a break. It says, Becoming a Best Friend of God. We're going to look at two of six secrets of friendship. Their first one, Through constant conversation, you will grow a close relationship with God by just attending church once a week or even having a daily quiet time. Friendship with God is built by sharing all... Okay, let me start over. Trying to go slower here tonight, folks. I've been reading through this so quickly just to try and save time, but I'm not going to do that. I think we really, I need to slow down for my benefit, and I hope that you'll hang with me and follow along. So becoming a best friend of God through constant conversation, that's in bold. You will never grow a close relationship with God just by attending church once a week or even having a daily quiet time. Friendship with God is built by sharing all your life experiences with Him. Of course, it is important to establish the habit of a daily devotional time with God, but He wants more than an appointment in your schedule. He wants to be included in every activity, every conversation, every problem, and every thought. And I struggled with this way back when I first became a Christian. I thought, man, i got to stop and take time to pray, which you should, and you should do that. But I found myself just constantly, I'd be driving down the road, I'd be at work, I'd be t whatever, and i just call, I'd constantly talk to him. I don't actually go to him in prayer. I just try and carry a conversation with him. And I think that's what Rick Warren is saying that God wants. You can carry on a continuous, open-ended conversation with him throughout your day, talking with him about whatever you are doing or thinking at that moment. Praying without ceasing means conversing with God while shopping, driving, working, or performing any other everyday task. You all know I've been following along. A common misconception is that spending time with God means being alone with Him. Of course, as Jesus modeled, you need time alone with God, but that is only a fraction of your waking hours. Everything you do can be spending time with God. If He is invited to be a part of it, and you stay aware of His presence. The classic book on learning how to develop a constant conversation with God is Practicing the Presence of God. It was written in the 17th century by Brother Lawrence, a humble cook in a French monastery. Brother Lawrence was able to turn even the most commonplace and menial tasks, like preparing meals and washing dishes, into acts of praise and commun communion with God. The key to friendship with God, he said, is not changing what you do, but changing your attitude toward what you do. That's huge, man. It's not about what changing what you do. It's about changing your attitude about what you do. What you normally do for yourself, you begin doing for God. What you normally do for yourself, you begin doing for God. Whether it is eating, bathing, working, relaxing, or taking out the trash. Today we often feel we must get away from our daily routine in order to worship God. But that is only because we haven't learned to practice His presence all the time. Brother Lawrence found it easy to worship God through the common task of life. He didn't have to go away for special spiritual retreats. This is God's ideal. In Eden, worship was not an event to attend, but a perpetual attitude. Adam and Eve were in constant communion with God. Because God is with you all the time, no place is any closer to God than the place where you are right now. The Bible says, He rules everything and is everywhere and is in everything. 
Another of Brother Lawrence's helpful ideas was to pray shorter conversational prayers continually through the day rather than trying to pray long sessions of complex prayers. To maintain focus and counteract wandering thoughts, he said, I do not advise you to use a great multiplicity of words in prayer, since long discourses are often the occasions for wandering. In an age of attention deficit, the 450-year-old suggestion to keep it simple seems to be particularly relevant. The Bible tells us to pray all the time. How is it possible to do this? One way is to use breath prayers. One way is to use breath prayers. <laughs> Sound like a broken record? One way is to use breath prayers. Throughout the day, as many Christians have done for centuries, you choose, I know I'm freaking weird. I don't know why any of y'all listen to me, but I'm hoping somebody does. And if you don't, it's okay. I love you anyway. You choose a brief sentence or a simple phrase you, that can be repeated to Jesus in one breath. You are with me. I receive your grace. I'm depending on you. I want to know you. I belong to you. Help me trust you. You can also use a short phrase of scripture. For me to live is Christ. You will never leave me. You are my God. Pray it as often as possible so it is rooted deep in your heart. Just be sure that your motive is to honor God, not control Him. Practicing the presence of God is a skill, a habit you can develop. Just as a musician practices scales every day in order to play beautiful music with ease, you must force yourself to think about God at different times in your day. You must train your mind to remember God. At first you will need, and maybe that's another reason we got 40 chapters, you know, I mean, every day you're going there. Practicing the presence of God is a skill, a habit you can develop. Just, uh, <laughs> I'm doing that broken record thing again, sorry. At first you will need to create reminders to regularly bring your thoughts back to the awareness that God is with you in that moment. Begin by placing visual reminders around you. You might post little notes that say, God is with me and for me right now. And I got to think, is this another sign from you, Lord? You know, I'm like, <laughs> Ah, over and over and over. Yes, thank you. Benedictine monks use the hourly chimes of a clock to remind them to pause and pray, the hour prayer. If you have a watch or cell phone with an alarm, you could do the same. Sometimes you will sense God's presence. Other times you won't. I mean, for crying out loud, we set an alarm to get up to go to work for someone else to live their dream, right? We can set an alarm to pray with God. Amen? Sure. Sometimes you will sense God's presence. Other times you won't. If you are seeking an experience of His presence through all of this, you have missed the point. We don't praise God to feel good, but to do good. Your goal is not a feeling, but a continual awareness of the reality that God is always present. That is the lifestyle of worship. Okay, and here's the second one we're going into today. Uh, the first was through constant conversation. This is through continual meditation. A second way to establish a friendship with God is by thinking about His Word throughout your day. This is called meditation, and the Bible repeatedly urges us to meditate on who God is, what He does, and what He has said. It is impossible to be God's friend apart from knowing what He says. You can't love God unless you know Him, and you can't know Him without knowing His Word. The Bible says God revealed Himself to Samuel through His Word. God still uses that method today. While you cannot spend all day studying the Bible, you can think about it throughout the day, recalling verses you have read or memorized and mulling them over in your mind. Meditation is often misunderstood as some difficult, mysterious ritual practice by isolated monks and mystics, but meditation is simply focused thinking, a skill anyone can learn and use anywhere. Meditation is simply focused thinking. When you think about a problem over and over in your mind, that's called worry. When you think about God's Word over and over in your mind, that's meditation. If you know how to worry, you already know how to meditate. You just need to switch your attention from your problems to Bible verses. The more you meditate on God's Word, the less you will have to worry about. The reason God considered Job and David his close friends was, what, was that they valued his Word above everything else, and they thought about it continually throughout the day. Job admitted, I have treasured the words of his mouth more than my daily bread. David said, Oh, how I love you, law. Oh, how I love your law. I meditate on it all day long. 
They are constantly in my thoughts. I cannot stop thinking about them. Friends share secrets, and God will share His secrets with you if you develop the habit of thinking about His Word throughout the day. God told Abraham His secrets, and He did the same with Daniel, Paul, the disciples, and other friends. I'm going to read that paragraph over, because I'm doing that this time around. <laughs> friends share secrets, and God will share His secrets with you if you develop the habit of thinking about His Word throughout the day. When you read your Bible or hear a sermon or listen to a tape, don't just forget it and walk away. Develop the practice of reviewing the truth in your mind, thinking about it over and over. The more time you spend reviewing what God has said, the more you will understand the secrets of this life that most people miss. The Bible says, Friendship with God is reserved for those who reverence Him. Friendship with God is reserved for those who reverence Him. With them alone, he shares the secrets of his promises. In the next chapter, we will see four more secrets of cultivating a friendship with God. But don't wait until tomorrow. Start today by practicing constant conversation with God and continual meditation by his word. Prayer lets you speak to God. Meditation lets God speak to you. Both are essential to becoming a friend of God. So day 11 is thinking about my purpose. And the point to ponder is, God wants to be my best friend. Verse to remember is from Psalm 25, verse 14a. Friendship with God is reserved for those who reverence Him. And the question to consider, what can I do to remind myself to think about God and talk to Him more often throughout the day? Alright guys, there you have it. Tried to keep my spin to a minimum. Have a new recording device here that we're trying out. We're going to try and download this and get it online. I love you all. Thanks for tuning in and watching. Again, I'm going to share this with Motocross for Christ with uh, my Life Improver series. I'm trying to switch some things up on my social media and keep my Jim Bull page for real estate, my Brat Mag, Mag page for Brat Magazine, Motocross for Christ, and Life Improver for devotionals and Bible study and things of that nature. It may take a few days to catch on. I'm going to share all this over to my YouTube channel. I'm going to ask you to come there and subscribe to that. If you do that, then you'll get a notification every time I post something. It makes it easy. You don't have to go digging around and looking for it. So hit, click on the link below go to my YouTube station you're gonna to have, to, have to tell you this sorry I keep thinking you're gonna see this after you click the link hit the subscribe button at the bottom then you'll get a notification whenever I post our stuff so love you guys thanks for following along I'll talk to you soon see ya